Hello fellow Unreal Engine artists, designers and developers, and welcome back to another episode of this Landscape Material series. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you a technique called triplanar projection and how we can use it on our cliffs to prevent stretching and create a more even distribution of the textures on steep faces. Let's get straight into it. Before we get into the implementation of this triplanar projection functionality, I want to explain the problem that this is solving and how it's solving the problem. So if you look at the landscape here, let's uh, move over to the sort of cliff edges here. And if I go into uh, the wireframe mode for the landscape, what you can see is that where the landscape is flat down at the bottom here, that the vertices of the landscape are fairly evenly spread out in squares. Once we start to get steep slopes, you can see up here where my cursor is, that it's almost stretched out twice the direction in the Z plane. And because we're using the landscape coordinates for our texture mapping, it effectively means that the texture is also stretched out twice as much there. And also it's it's sheared in that direction as well, an angle. So it's going to distort the texture here. Now, for something like a cliff um, rocks, you may not notice it too much. And because triplanar projection uses a little bit of uh, extra performance, you may uh, deduce that it's not required. But we're only going to do it on our cliff texture and we're only going to do it in the far tiling. So it won't really add too much to it, but it will actually, I think, make the textures look uh, better in the uh, distance. So uh, that's the that's the issue that we're trying to solve. Um, how does triplanar projection solve that problem? Well, instead of just using the landscape coordinates, which is effectively a flat view in one dimension, i.e. projecting from above, it projects it in three different dimensions. It projects it from above, down, um, it also projects it in the X and Y coordinates as well. So it's projected from the left, right, front and back as well. And that means that if you have a perpendicular element here, then it will be using the uh, front or left projection in order to get that in a the right aspect ratio. And if it's flat down here, it will be used in the top down projection. And if it's at something like 45 degrees, you'll, it'll be a blend between the two but it should just look more natural and less stretched all around. So let's go back to the lit view here. Um, let's switch off our snow. So in the material instance, let's go down and switch off the snow. And just to further show this with the textures, let's reset our cliff uh, textures to the grid. So you'll just have to uncheck the add cliff and recheck it in order to uh, jog it into using those textures and you can see what I mean about the texture up here it's uh, at an oblique angle and it's also stretched out here quite stretched out here what the effect we want is to have it at an even um, horizontal view on those textures and that's what triplanar projection will do for us so with that explanation out of the way, um, let's get into doing the actual implementation. Uh, one last little thing I'm going to do. Uh, you don't have to do this. Um, I, I want just a clear sky for my um, landscape from now on, especially with this sort of snowy top. So I'm going to delete the volumetric cloud for now, or you could just um, disable it. Um, and now I've just got a blue sky with no clouds, which uh, I, I, I prefer while I'm uh, creating this landscape. Um, so let's get into the implementation. OK, so I've reopened our master material and because this is uh, a texture uh, alternative that we want to put on each layer, I'm going to adjust the material function for creating the layer in order to put this functionality in. So if you can find one of your layers, find the MF create layer, double click to open that up. And if you go to the beginning of this, you can see that we have our texture objects for our base color and normal. So what I want to do is offer an alternative uh, texturing for triplanar projection. So beneath this, what I'll do is I will create, well, first of all, I will take these base color and normal textures. So let's 
right click and if you type in texture base color to get that reroute node and we'll also get the texture normal that came out of here as well. We're going to use these nodes that are provided for us by Epic called World Aligned Texture and World Aligned Normal. So if you type in World Aligned and find the texture and then right click and also do World Aligned Normal. Uh, the normal is treated slightly differently than the texture. And then what we can do is we can plug our um, texture base color into the main input for the texture object. Similarly, we'll pl plug our normal texture into here. And then for the output, we want to take our XYZ texture. So that is the texture that is mapped onto all three planes. So it's really pretty simple to apply this. And we will create a uh, add a named reroute node here which I'm going to call dry planar color and from from the normal again come out of the XYZ texture add a named reroute node called dry planar normal and these will be the alternative textures if we choose to use those dry planar textures instead of the regular ones and we can line things up by selecting each group of three nodes and hitting Q to line it up. So let's look at the other um, parameters here. Most of them we can leave as default but we definitely need a texture size. Now with our regular tiling we're using the landscape coordinates and dividing by a parameter to get the tiling size but with world aligned textures these are in world space and they take the actual size of them rather than coordinates. So we're not using UVs here. So what we need is a texture size in three dimensions. I'm going to keep these dimensions all equal. So I just want one parameter and then I'll make a vector three to plug in. So let's move over here, do an input for this material function. And I'm going to call this triplanar tiling size and it is going to be a scalar value and I want to use a preview value for this in case nothing is plugged in to this function and so using one on the keyboard I can add in a preview value I'm going to use 8192 and 8k texture size plug that into the preview make sure that the use preview value on this is set to uh, true and then we need to convert this into a vector 3 so come out here do make float 3 and what we want to do is have the same dimensions on X Y and Z and then plug that into the texture size let's just move this back slightly and plug this also into the normal texture size because we want our base color and our normals to be in sync. Um, so rest of the parameters I'm largely going to leave untouched because the defaults are fine. The only one that you might want to consider is this last one here on the normals. This use high quality normals. Um, by default it's set to true and it adds a few instructions in here. In my tests I found that for the distant uh, textures that we're using it didn't really make much difference so let's save a little bit of performance and set that to false so right click here do a static boolean it should be set to false by default and plug that into the use high quality normals okay so that's our basic textures here um, now we need another parameter here to uh, a switch to decide whether to switch triplanar on or off so beneath this do another input parameter so function input and make it let's call it use triplanar it's going to be a static boolean we need a we want a preview value for this and so right click just before it add a static bool by default it's false and plug that into the preview. So we don't plug anything into this. It won't use triplanar by default. 
And then we're going to use this in a minute to decide whether to switch uh, our textures or not. So let's just create a name to reroute declaration node at the moment and call this uh, use triplanar. So I've just aligned these three nodes with Q and I'm also going to make these colors for these reroute nodes our usual uh, pinky purple color. So I'm just going to shift select all of those and change those to our regular color. OK, so that is all of our triplanar functionality um, or calculations. Let's put a comment node around this and call it uh, triplanar projection. And now what we need to do is use this switch here to decide whether we want the regular um, colors and normals or these triplanar ones. So move over a little bit in the texture to where it does the base color and normal tiling. We need to create a little bit of space in here. So move these last few nodes along a bit. Stretch out your comments. And now we're also going to just create a little bit of space in here after the texture sample. So let's just move these nodes after the texture samples over to the end. Maybe move the depth fade mask further along as well. And let's look at the base color first. So at the moment, uh, we've got the uh, texture base color going into the texture sample. Um, so that's the standard. Uh, projected that's the standard projected from above texture and what I want to do is have an option just for the far tiling whereby if that switches on instead of using this texture sample we'll use the triplanar sample so all we need to do is put in a static switch and the uh, switch is going to be our use triplanar input that we just added the reroute node for. So that's going to be our switch. If it's true, we're going to use the triplanar color. And if it's false, we're going to use the regular texture sample from here. And then that output is going to be plugged into the LERP. So that is our switch between regular sampling and triplanar color sampler. And that's on the base color. We need to do the same for the normal as well. So select these three nodes, do a control C, come down here and do a control V. And we will plug, instead of triplanar color here, we're going to be using triplanar normal, the one we calculated earlier. And that goes into the true option. If it's the switch, the use triplanar switch is false, then we're going to use the regular normal texture and plug that in there. And again, just move this around a bit and move these nodes out of the way so they're um, clear space. So that's pretty much everything we've done in the material function. Last thing we need to do is we need to add uh, this into the uh, main material. Let's just make sure that our options here have the right sort order. So we'll make the use triplanar. I think we've got into the tens. So why don't we make the use triplanar um, sort order 20 and the triplanar tiling size 21. Click on save here. Let's go back up to our uh, master material. You can see in the crate layer we have two new parameters at the end of the crate layer. If we don't plug anything into them, it will default to false for use triplanar. So it'll be exactly as it was before. Uh, what I want to do though, is I want to have an option for the cliff layer. Um, you could add um, options here for other layers as well, but I think it's only the cliff one that uh, will really benefit from it. So go down into in the material until you find the cliff layer. And we need to add two new parameters in here for the cliff. So uh, let's add a new static bool parameter. I'm going to call that cliff use triplanar. And I will put it in the cliff group and sort priority 20 and plug it in 
to the use triplanar input and then we'll steal this cliff normal intensity so I'm doing control D to duplicate it we'll call this one cliff triplanar tiling size default value 8192 it's already in cliff because I copied it and I'll make the sort order 21 and we need to plug that into our tiling size all right let's do a save and it's time to do a test of this so come back to our main elements here and you can see that it's set at the moment I did an earlier test so let's switch it off so this is what you should see um, you should see that there is the grid here and there is this new parameter called cliff use triplanar uh, you can see that it's got our stretched and sheared grid options here but as soon as we click on use triplanar those immediately straighten out and we get a nice even and horizontal set of textures there on those steep cliff faces we can change the tiling size as well so if we halve this to 4096 you can see we have twice the number of textures there or we can just go back to our regular 8k tile size so that's looking good um, all we need to do now is to uh, reset our original textures and we're done with uh, today's episode so go to the base color and normal textures find the cliff base color and in the normal find the cliff normal and there you can see that the textures look pretty good there if we switch off the triplanar and just kind of look at what the um, issue is that we've solved let's uh, click it off here what you can notice particularly up here in this very steep part you can see that these cracks are sort of going up in a an angle and it's looking a bit sort of swirly and stretched out as soon as we click use triplanar on that part is immediately horizontal with those sort of stratified rocks and you can see it looks the same up here as it does down in these sort of shallower parts as well so um, i think that's been pretty successful i uh, hope you found it useful today and in the next couple of episodes we're going to start looking at ways to add foliage to the landscape using the masks we've created so uh, in the next episode we'll look at the traditional landscape grass types uh, which is a quick way to add uh, foliage based on the layers that we've created. And then in the episode after, we'll look at a more modern method using procedural content generation, PCG, which um, gives us much more uh, flexibility and more options in how we create the foliage using those masks. So uh, stick with me for that, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.